Derbyshire Fire and Rescue Service is embarking on a period of consultation with both its communities and employees. The purpose of this is to ask key questions and to use the responses from this consultation to feed into the service's long-term planning process. But before we can do that, the first thing we need to do is provide information and education so that the consultees can make informed decisions. We genuinely value your opinions, so please take the time to complete the short questionnaire at the end of this presentation. This property fire risk map highlights where the risk of fires in properties are across Derbyshire. The darker the colour, the higher the risk. So the white areas are low risk and the red areas are very high risk. This information is gained using both predictive and historical data. The slide also shows where Derbyshire's 31 fire stations are located and the costs per annum associated with each one. In the 2010 Comprehensive Spending Review, the Fire and Rescue Service, along with other public sector organisations, were told they would receive a 25% reduction in budget over the four-year period. For Derbyshire Fire and Rescue Service, this means a reduction in budget over that period from 42 to 37 million. In light of these budget restrictions, Derbyshire Fire and Rescue Service embarked on an effectiveness programme to reduce the budget down by the required £5 million over the four-year period. And to date, the service is in line to achieve this. However, the settlement for the final two years have yet to be announced, so there is uncertainty of what the exact requirements will be. Furthermore, the Comprehensive Spending Review for 2015 and onwards is completely unknown, yet it's anticipated that it will involve further cuts or reductions to the budget. The first question then is if the service does continue to face restrictions on its budget. Do you support the principle of matching the service's resources to the level of risk in each area? The term resources here is used in its broadest term to mean the appliances, equipment, the prevention, the protection and response activities across the board. The next area I want to talk about is domestic sprinklers and the reason for this is because they save people's lives. Between 2010 and 11, 388 people lost their lives in the home due to fire. And in Derbyshire alone, from 2010 to the current day, 27 people have lost their lives. And this is far too many preventable fire deaths. In the last couple of years, Derbyshire Fire and Rescue Service have attended a number of tragic incidents, two of which are the fire at Hullam Ward, where four children tragically died, and the fire at Victory Road, where six children lost their lives. These have had devastating effects on the family and the communities. Yet these sorts of tragedies can easily be prevented through the fitting of domestic sprinklers. No one has died in England from a fire in a property fitted with domestic sprinklers. They are that, that effective. It's like having a firefighter permanently located in each room in the house. As soon as a fire starts, the sprinklers operate and extinguish the fire in that room with the minimum water damage. In addition to the devastation that fire deaths bring to families and communities, they also have a real cost to society. It's calculated by CLG that the cost of a fire death is over one and a half million pounds. The cost of a serious injury in excess of 150,000 pounds. So these have a real tangible cost to society. The charts on the left shows a fire in a room without sprinklers, the one on the right with domestic sprinklers. The fire curve on the left hand side shows the severity of the fire continually increasing. 
The yellow line shows the survivability within the room where the fire starts. After approximately one and a half minutes, the smoke alarm, provided it's got batteries in and works, will alert the people in the home that a fire is starting. Sometime shortly after that, the occupants will notify the fire service. Then the fire service will arrive and extinguish the fire. The one on the right hand side shows the fire starting and after two to three minutes, the sprinkler head actuating, putting the fire out. The fire and rescue service will still respond to the incident to make sure the fire has been extinguished correctly. The next two slides show an experiment that was conducted in Chesterfield, Derbyshire last year, where two identical rooms were set fire to, one with sprinklers and one without. The first slide shows a room with no sprinklers and after 10 minutes you can see the devastation that's caused to that. The second slide shows a sprinklered room where very little damage has occurred. The fire has been quickly extinguished and water damage is minimised. The main objectives of the sprinkler campaign is to highlight the benefits of sprinklers across Derbyshire, other counties and the local authorities to mainstream sprinklers within all new builds in Derbyshire to establish a home for life where people are safe in their buildings all the way through their lives. The service is also working in partnership to retrofit sprinklers in the most vulnerable homes through partnerships with local authorities. The service has set aside £200,000 of its budget to match fund £20,000 in each district council. So that means £400,000 is available to fit sprinklers in the most vulnerable homes in Derbyshire. The costs of fitting sprinklers in a domestic property are variable. They're dependent on a number of factors. For example, the location of the property, the size and type of the home, and the water supply infrastructure that's available, whether additional pumps need to be fitted. The retrofitting of a typical home is somewhere in the region of two and a half thousand pounds. However, Cowlamount Flats in Sheffield, where 47 flats were retrofitted, came to a cost of just over £1,000 each. That leads us to our second question. Do you support the service in funding the fitting of sprinklers in targeted high-risk premises? The Localism Act 2011 gives fire and rescue authorities the right to charge for certain actions other than for commercial purposes. The types of incidents that Derbysh Fire and Rescue Service attend can be categorised into three broad areas. The first one is fires. The second, emergency special services. These can range from car crashes through to persons trapped in machinery. And the third class are non-emergency special services. Derbyshire Fire and Rescue Service is currently considering the possibility of recovering costs exclusively from the non-emergency special service group. Now the benefit of putting in place a cost recovery system would be an incentive for people to call the relevant service rather than requesting a fire engine. This will ensure that the fire engines we have are available to respond for life-threatening incidents. The sorts of examples where cost recovery could be used are at repeated false alarms. If leaking pipes, then call out a plumber. If you've got loose roof slates, then call out a builder. If a person's locked out of the premise, call a locksmith. Now that brings us to our third question. Would you support the service recovering these sorts of costs? The traditional view of the Fire and Rescue Service's role is one of responding to emergencies exclusively. 
However, the Fire and Rescue Service's role is far more comprehensive and proactive than this. It starts firstly by analysing the risk the community faces and then determines the most appropriate way to reduce those risks through three tools. And these are prevention, protection and response. The first of these tools, prevention, works from the philosophy that prevention is better than cure. It starts by educating and informing the public to help them prevent fires from occurring in the first place. If a fire should occur, then it provides information and education to ensure that they can escape from the premise safely. To achieve this aim, we work in partnership with a range of organisations across Derbyshire to ensure that as many people as possible, through as many mediums as possible, are informed of this. The second of the risk management tools, protection, is focused primarily on the non-domestic premises. Buildings such as hospitals, nursing homes, hotels, shopping centres, cinemas and theatres. The principle here is that Derbyshire Fire and Rescue Service police the fire safety legislation that governs these type of premises to ensure that should a fire occur that everyone can escape from the premise safely. This ensures there's a means for raising the alarm. There are adequate escape routes and adequate management systems in place to ensure that people can escape safely. The final risk management element is response and this is that traditional approach when a fire engine turns out and extinguishes the fire or deals with the emergency. These three principles can be thought of as three walls of defence. The first wall, prevention, is trying to stop the fire in the first place. The second wall, protection, ensuring that people can escape from a building should a fire occur. And the third wall is response, when all of us fail, sending a fire engine to deal with that emergency. The fourth and final question is therefore focused on the funding the Fire and Rescue Service has available and where this funding should be focused across the three delivery functions of prevention, protection and response. So the first part of the question is with a larger budget. Imagine we have five bronze coins. Where would you distribute those five coins across the three delivery functions? The second part of the question, if this is reduced down and we have just three silver coins, then where would you distribute those across the three functions of prevention, protection and response? If you have any further questions, then please contact Rick Roberts or Cam Bassey on the service website or via telephone on 01332 771 221. Thank you.